So we're going to find the volume generated by ro rotating this region about the line x equals 1. Let's go ahead and draw that region. So we have e equals negative x. Uh, we could plot a couple points. Or if we know what the e to the x function looks like, this is e to the x right here as a horizontal asymptote. And a y-intercept, you plug in 1 for x, you have e to the 0, which is 1. Now, if we put in a negative x instead of e to the x, that would be a horizontal reflection. So it'll reflect across the y-axis. We'll still get this point at 1, but now it'll be a decreasing function that will look like this. You do get a horizontal asymptote here on the left. We have a couple other lines. y equals 0 is the x-axis. x equals negative 1 is this vertical line. And last up, x equals 0. So that x equals 0. Come on, zoom. There we go. All right, x equals zero is the y-axis. So this is the region we're gonna rotate right there. Now, <clears throat> when we rotate that region, we're rotating about the line x equals one. Probably should draw this one in solid. So rotating about x equals one right here. This is gonna be a hollow region. If we do the disk method, we're going to need to uh, account for this hollowness, so we're going to have to subtract out that hollow region. If we do the shell method, it doesn't matter that it's hollow. So let's go ahead and do the shell method. And I'm going to need a better pen than this. Let's go with that one. There we go. Okay. So we're going to rotate this vertical piece right here and it's gonna rotate into a shell. We need a few different measurements. We're gonna need this right here. That'll be the radius. Now, if we look at the shell, or if we clean this region with this vertical piece, we're gonna to need to change the x coordinate, which means these are all functions of x, r of x. The height will be h of x. All right, the r of x, it's always going to be big minus small. For us, the big, this is horizontal, so the big's on the right side, so that's x equals 1. So the big is 1. The small is actually your x-coordinate itself, so it's just x. Now our h of x is going to be the height now it's still big minus small. And the big is going to be that exponential, which is e to the negative x. Now the small is going to be the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So this is e to the negative x. Now to get the surface area, we have a circumference, which is 2 pi r h. And we're going to integrate this, and this will be our volume. Of course, we're going to go a to b. So our minimum x value is right there, negative 1. Maximum x value, you're not going to 1. You're actually stopping at the y-axis, which is x equals 0. So it's going from negative 1 to 0. Bring out the 2 pi out front. r, that's 1 minus x h is e to the negative x, and this is going to be a dx. Now again, it's dx because if you look at this cross section, which I drew way too big, you have to move it left and right to cover the region, meaning you have to change the x coordinate. That's why this is an x uh, antiderivative. All right, so how do we integrate this? Easier said than done. What we're going to do is distribute here. We're going to distribute e to the negative x across these two parts. So e to the negative x times 1 is e to the negative x minus, I'm going to move the minus over here, minus x e to the negative x. 
this is an integral, but we can split the integral across addition and subtraction. So I'll split it like this. Uh, oops, went that the wrong order. We'll do this in two steps actually. So one times e to the negative x is e to the negative x minus x e to the negative x dx. All right, now we're going to split across that subtraction sign. I'm bringing that negative all the way up front. You still have that 2 pi times both of those terms. Okay, so from here, this antiderivative, I would just take a guess. It's probably e to the negative x. You can check it. If you take the derivative, it's negative e to the negative x. So it would be negative, negative, uh, negative e to the negative x. You still have your times 2 pi in there. And you're going negative 1 to 0 minus. All right, I'm not going to do this antiderivative because it's an integration by parts. We're in the integration by parts chapter. So... This, you would take derivative of the x and antiderivative of e to the negative x. So it's u dv, where u is going to equal x. dv is e to the negative x dx. And go ahead and use your int by parts.